Welcome to Microsoft Access 2013 Beginner Level 1, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com here on YouTube. This video is Lesson 9 of 12, plus an introduction. If this is the first video you're watching in the series, click on the link shown to start this course from the beginning. Otherwise, we'll start Lesson 9 right now. In Lesson 9, we're going to learn how to build a query, apply a multi-field sort to the query, and a criteria filter. In this lesson, we have the same mission that we had in the last lesson. The boss wants to see a list of all the customers from New York sorted by last name. More importantly, I want to create a query to do this so I can pull it up at a moment's notice at any time in the future without having to redo all the steps. So come up top and click on Create, and then you'll see a Queries section. There's a Query Wizard and Query Design. Now the Query Wizard is okay for building some of the more advanced queries, but right now we're just going to build a simple query and I want to teach you how to do it from scratch. So click on Query Design. The first thing you'll see is a blank query has been created in the background and you now have the Show Table window. Now a query can get its data from tables, other queries, or you can see a list of both. Now we only have the one table in our database right now, the customer table, so make sure that's selected and then click the Add button down below. You'll see in the background the customer table has now been added to Query 1. Now later on, when we have more tables in our database and we've built some other queries, we can actually make queries based on multiple tables. We'll talk about that in our more advanced classes. For now, we've got our table in there. Let's just click Close, and we can see our one customer table. Notice how the ribbon has changed. Now I have a Query Tools Design tab. You can see there's a Run button, a Query Type section, all kinds of new buttons. Down here on the bottom, you'll see there's different columns. This is where we're going to put our query fields. Over here, the rows are labeled field, table, sort, show, and so on. We'll talk about this in just a moment. Now, I will tell you, this is one of the stranger things you're going to see in Access. This interface isn't really intuitive until you get to know how it works. Once you get the hang of this, it's really quite simple. But for new users, seeing this for the first time, it's a little confusing. Basically, here's how it works. Up here is the table that we're getting the data from. Down here is where you're going to put the fields that you want to see in the query. So in a nutshell, we take the stuff that we want to see from the table and just bring it down below. So let's say I just want to see a list of first and last names. I'm going to bring first name and last name down into the query. So click on first name, then click and drag it right here into that first column and let it go. Now you have first name in column one. Now find last name, click and drag it down here into column two. So now your query consists of the customer table showing first name and last name. It's that easy. That's all you have to do to see a list of first names and last names. Here you'll see the field name, first name, last name, the table they're from, because remember, you can have multiple tables in a query, so they're both in the customer T. We'll talk about sort and criteria in just a minute. Now to see the result that the query is going to produce, take your mouse and click on the Run button right up here. There's your list of first name and last name. Now that's exactly what I've asked for at this point. I told the query, just show me a list of first name and last name. That's it. You get all your customer records, 1 through 11, first name and last name. It's not sorted yet, and there's no filter, because I haven't told the query to do that yet. Access gave us exactly what we asked for. Now let's say in addition to first name and last name, I also want to see the phone number. Maybe that's the reason the boss wants this list. So we can see a list of all of his customers, first name and last name, with their phone number. So let's go back to Design View. Here's the Design View button. If you drop this down, you'll see there's Datasheet View, SQL View, that's a little more advanced, we'll talk about that in future classes, and Design View. Let's go back to Design View. Look at that, look familiar? That's the Design View for the query. Let's add phone number, find the phone number field, 
right there, click on it, then drag it right down here and drop it in column 3. Now if I run the query again, there's the additional field. First name, last name, phone number. How about another field? Let's say you want to add credit limit. So let's find the credit limit field right there. Now here's a trick. Instead of clicking and dragging, we can just double click on the field. Watch this. Double click, and there it goes. It will automatically appear in the next open column. And now if I run the query, there's the extra field. But now the boss says, oh, wait a minute. I don't want that information on this. I don't want everyone to be able to see credit limits. This is just to be a simple phone number field that I can put on the bulletin board. Okay, fine. Back to design view. How do you get rid of a column? Well, you can delete a column by clicking on this little tiny bar right above the column. You'll see your mouse turns into a downward pointing arrow. Click right there and then press delete on the keyboard. And that's how you get rid of a column. Now, how do I sort this information? Well, if you're in data sheet view, you can apply sorts up here. But these sorts aren't permanent. They don't stay with the query. So let's go back into design mode and look right down here. There's a row that says sort. So click inside this field right here. We're in the sort row under first name. Notice a drop down box appears. Click the drop down box and you'll see it says ascending, descending, and not sorted. Let's pick ascending. Now the first name field will display sorted ascending. And if I run the query, you can see the first name field is sorted. And that's permanent. That will save with the query. All right, back to design view. If you want to sort only by last name, turn this sort off, not sorted, and then sort by last name, ascending. When you run the query, notice how the results are now sorted by last name. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to sort by last name and then first name. So if the last names are the same, they're then sorted by first name. That's a typical sort. Now it just so happened that Joe came above Susan Jones, and they are in alphabetical order. But the Smiths are backwards. Joe should be sorted in front of Peter. So how do I sort by multiple columns? Let's go back to design view. Now, if I sort first name ascending and then run the query, look what happens. It's sorted by first name, and then here we have two Joes. Notice they're sorted alphabetically that way. In Access, when you're sorting in a query, the fields are sorted left to right. So the first column with a sort on it gets sorted first, then the next column, and so on. So if you want last name to be sorted before first name, you have to physically move the last name column to the left of first name. Now, how do we move a column? Well, remember how we select a column by clicking on that little tiny box right above the column where you see the downward pointing arrow. Click there. Now, let it go. Hand off the mouse. Now, you're going to have a white arrow. Click and then drag that column to the left. And there we go. That's how you move a column. Let's say I want to move the phone number column up front, right? Click here, let it go. Click again on the same spot and drag it to the left and drop it there. All right, let's put it back where it was. Click up here and drag it to the right. See that? That's how you move those columns around. Now that I've got last name as the first column in the query, it should sort by last name, then first name. And if I run the query, you can see that is the case. The Smiths are now sorted correctly. Okay, so back again to design view. Let's save this query. Now this is the major benefit of queries, is we can save this and never have to do this work again in the future. So click the Save button or hit Control S on your keyboard. You'll get the Save As window up. I'm going to save this as Customer Q, no space. Remember, I like to end all my queries in the letter Q. And now I'll click OK. Notice the customer Q appears over here under the Queries section in my navigation pane. Now, if I close the query, I can run it again, 
by just simply double clicking on customer queue. And there it is. There's my set of data sorted by last name, comma, first name. And I didn't have to do any of that work again. Someone who doesn't even know access can come in here and just run this query. Now that was a pretty simple query, but you can make some pretty complicated queries. Now we're not finished with our query just yet because the boss said, I only want to see customers from New York. So let's go back to design view. So now we need to filter our results based on the state. So we need to add the state field to our query. So find the state field, it's right there. Double click on it, that will add the state field to our query. If I run the query now, you'll see there's all the states. I haven't filtered it yet, I haven't told Access to do anything. Now we could just come in here and apply a filter like I showed you in the table, but remember, this type of a sort or filter does not save with the query. So let's go back to design view. Notice down here, there's a row that says criteria. The criteria row is where you basically specify filters for these fields. They can get a lot more complex than using the table-based filters I showed you earlier. Now I'm gonna come down here in the state column, in the criteria row, and type in what I want for a criteria. In this particular case, I want to see all the customers from New York. So I'm gonna type in NY, and then press enter or tab. Now notice, Access automatically put that inside of quotes. In Access, whenever we're dealing with text values, that's called a text string, we have to make sure we put it inside of quotes. Now in this particular case, Access realized that we needed the quotes and added them for us. It doesn't always do that, so just keep it in mind. Text value criteria have to be inside of quotes. Okay, so let's run the query again, and look at that. I've set up a criteria saying that I only want to see customers from New York, and there they are. Now notice, in this particular case, you do not see a filter applied down here, because this isn't a filter, it's a query criteria, which is different. A filter is something you apply on the fly, and it's not saved with the table or query. The query criteria is a permanent part of this query. Now I want to save this query so I can pull this list up at any time in the future without having to do all this again. But don't just hit Control S or don't just click on the floppy disk because what happens is it will save it right over the old customer queue. I don't know how many times I've done that with Word or Excel documents where I've opened up an old one that I wanted to kind of use as a starting place, made some changes and then hit save and then I was like, oop, I just overwrote my old document. I want to keep my customer queue and I want to save this as a different query. So click on File and then Save As. That will allow you to specify a different query name. Now you can save the database, the whole database, or just the object you're working with. In this case, I just want to save that object as a new query. Now it defaults the copy of Customer Queue I'm going to change this to customers from New York queue. And it's a query, so I'll hit OK. Now, yes, I know I mentioned earlier that I try to keep my table and query names singular, but that's more of a general guideline than a rule. Notice now both queries are here in the navigation pane, and you can open them both up at the same time. Notice now I have two tabs. There's customers from New York and the whole customer queue. You can also open up the customer table if you want to and see all three things. Now, personally, I don't like this tabbed interface. I like overlapping windows when each object shows up as a window inside of Access. And in the next level, level two, I will show you how to switch the database. For now, to close these tabs, just hit the X over here. Close that. Close customer queue. And there's the customer from New York queue. We'll close that one. And see now I can open up the customers from New York at any time in the future. Boom, there it is. No work to be done. Now let's say in addition to the customers from New York, you also want a quick way to see all the customers from Pennsylvania. Now if you know ahead of time you're going to be basing a query on another query, make the copy first. Watch this. So you don't accidentally save over an existing query. Here's my query in the navigation pane. I'm going to copy it, Control-C, and then hit Paste, Control-V. 
paste as. Now we'll just change this to customers from PA. Customers from Pennsylvania. Now we'll make our edits. Right click, design view, find the state field and change the criteria. Inside of quotes, we'll make that PA. Now we can save it by hitting Control S because we made a copy already. Let's close it and open it back up again. Customers from PA. Looks like I might not have any customers from Pennsylvania. How can we tell for sure? Well, open up the customer queue or the customer T. Let's see. Let's slide across here. Uh, looks like I don't have anybody from Pennsylvania. All right, let's cheat. Let's say this guy is from Pennsylvania. Okay, let's make that record Pennsylvania. I'll close my customer table. And now, wait a minute. He's not showing up here. Shouldn't this query show me all the records from Pennsylvania? Well, query records do not refresh until you close the query and reopen it, or you can click this Refresh All button, and that will refresh the query results. So the query records will refresh themselves when the query opens, or if you manually hit the Refresh button. And that usually only comes into play, again, when you're dealing with a multi-user database. If someone else is typing in records, and you open a query, and they add more records, you might not see their updates until you either manually refresh the list or close and reopen the query. Now one very important thing to realize is that the queries themselves do not have any data in them. The queries are simply showing you data that's stored in the table. These are not copies of the data. That's live data from the table. However, keep in mind that is live data from the tables. So if you make a change in here, if you edit a record or even add a new record, that data is saved in the table. So if I change this Pennsylvania to Florida, let's say, if I close and reopen the query, that record's gone because we no longer have customers from Pennsylvania again. You can see that if we open up the table. And I'll slide over here to the right, and there's the record. Now it says Florida. So keep those two things in mind. One, queries themselves have no data in them. They're just showing you data that's stored in a table. And two, any changes you make while you're viewing a query get saved in the table. Can you make read-only queries so you can generate these lists and have them for your coworkers? Yes, you can. We'll talk about that in future lessons. In that particular case, I would recommend you use a report, but again, we'll cover that later. Now, we have two queries from different states. What if you wanted a query for each state? Would you have to make 50 separate queries? The answer is no. There is something called a parameter query where you can make it so the user types in the state they want when the query is run. That's a little more advanced. I cover that in Access Beginner Level 5. Remember, today we're just learning the basics of query design, but my students do ask this stuff every time I teach this. So I just want to let you know, yes, it's possible. Yes, we will cover it later. Another popular question, what is that asterisk for up there? That's so you can add all of the fields to the query in one shot. For example, let's say you want to sort by last name and first name. So you have to bring these fields in manually to put a sort on those columns. However, you can then just add the star. Notice over here it says customer t dot star. Now when I run the query, I'll see all of the fields without having to bring them all individually. I'm going to delete that for now. We'll talk about the star later. Another question I usually get asked at this point, what are these show boxes for? These are so you can bring a field into the query but not show it when the query runs. See that? The field is still there, but it doesn't display. For example, Remember that credit limit earlier? Well, let's say you want a list of all your customers with credit limits over $1,000. You want to use a criteria on that field, but you don't want to display the data. So that's one of the reasons you might want to use that box. Now, there are tons of things you can do with queries. I literally just scratched the surface today. You can make queries with multiple tables. You can make queries that prompt the user for information. You can make queries that 
edit records in a table or delete records. There's all kinds of things you can do. I cover queries throughout my entire series of classes. If I were to put it all together, there's probably 100 hours just on queries. But that's all you need to know today to make basic queries to sort and filter your data. And to save those queries so you can run them later without having to do any work. Now in the next lesson, we're going to learn how to build a form to make a nice user-friendly interface for our end users. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and comment below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos all the time. Click to start lesson 10 now. And be sure to visit my website, accesslearningzone.com, for more free videos and to sign up for the entire Level 2 series for just $1.